without fear before our enemies. We have sworn an oath to restore Biafra or we die in the process. There will be no retreat and no surrender. If the option they give to us is to seek our restoration by violence, the every living thing living in the zoo will be destroyed. All the animals will be destroyed. It's a promise and a pledge we are making to them. They must understand that we just don't... Dear friends, wherever you are, we are welcoming you to hopefully another exciting edition of our presentation this very day, the 18th day of April, in the year of our Most High Elohim, 2021. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This very broadcast is being received right across the surface of this very planet Earth. Wherever you are, regardless of your time zone, as long as you have an internet-enabled device, once you have access to the internet, once you have a transistor radio in Biafra land and parts of the zoo called Nigeria, once you have a satellite receiver, you should and us to be able to listen to us this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are. I welcome each and every one of you, and for our mothers, those of them who are celebrating today, I say happy Mothering Sunday, or is it Happy Mother Sunday, whichever one that it is, to all of you, especially 
those at the front line of these very efforts to restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth. We are live and we are direct. As you well know, we now broadcast on, simultaneously on multiple platforms in order to confuse the enemy and to ensure that this very gospel of redemption gets to those who need it most. I welcome each and every one of you. And I know that Maryland is having a fundraiser today. We got our times wrong. It is my fault, actually. It is not their fault. They did not deliberately put it on a day when I was going to broadcast. We had agreed on this very date way before now but given the urgency of the situation at home, I now said I'm going to broadcast every two days, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So it is not their fault. And I will acknowledge them roundabout in about 23 minutes time. I will join them. I will ensure that our technicians have done all they could so I can join that very fundraiser briefly around about 7.30, beautiful and time. My name is Mazen Namdekan. I am the leader of the largest mass movement on the face of this very planet Earth. I am the director of radio, Biafra and Biafra Television. But the most important title that I hold, and above all, is that by this very special grace of the Most High, Chukwokegadonapurumihenin Adonai El Shaddai, I am and will remain a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Our job is very simple, to restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth, that the scriptures may come to fulfillment. As I keep reminding everyone, anytime you recite the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Yahushua prayed, when they asked him, Rabbi, teach us how to pray. And he said, our Father who art in heaven, signifying that there is only one God, one creator, one alpha and one omega. Hallowed be thy name, which means there is no other name above that of our creator. No other name, because Jesus himself said, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on this very earth, which is the kingdom of Biafra that we're fighting for, the kingdom of God upon the face of, the, of this earth. Let thy will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Let that promise that you made to us come to fulfillment in our time. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Of course, as mortals, we must forgive those who sin against us. But the ultimate forgiveness lies in the hands of God Almighty in heaven, whom we are praying to this very evening. And you will win Jaman, can you one in a gun when you're fagging and a cabin in a guy in a gabby go botchinina? I want to get in on all long and no leak on India and after on the Buddha wouldn't and keep when they're not a boo botchinina. And you will not see a bed and go to be con the crap and kind of new den canyon as a co with Yanni Louis. Give a bar and you may have a bed and go. We make a poor in his say, and you will be an amiss. Nandon Abogan. Anyway, all waka ha oko blan ka manyina ka nna nke bere ko buru ngozi na elu ngozi to made ni ne wote ni ma ka ke gwere hiwe otu nche na lanso bo bia fra nna nke bere de ngozi o ga ga ko na pa ndi de tuwa o bla de ndi nke no na china ndi boro nye ko no bo chinke ta gba sara isense kuti network o bla de ndi ke no na maryland no ga wa nna nke igwe we na atule ka ngese wote ni ma ka nna nke bere 
Blacky were causing honey no to not. Blacky were causing you know to not to not care, but I didn't go. Nee, but the mass equal and uncle America won can. I can't seem to know how one honor and keep the cobble because you use you. I guess I will. Observe Bogus and Kaka and Kanye, Obsen and Maragonia women, and we're not a game on again and black. Yeah, my mother know me could have more barn a barn, you know. My dear flag, I better than uncle bread and goes not for me. And a gaja hands on my nose or preacher, one in the guest no more be a friend and cable, a woman or bon go up with chin again and keep a clean in the crack. On your den some bunny may be. Narekele or to don't so pray jamma. Sit in a big baby. Maroon, you can't do it. He said, He said, He said, I am always in the habit of making sure that we log onto my Facebook page, Mazen Namdo Namdo Khan official. And I also, the reason why I do it is to try to let our people understand that we are fighting, should I say, a multiplicity of enemies from everywhere, from every angle, even those who do not have any need nor reason to rise against Biafra, they are doing so because we are the light and the children of darkness are not relenting. Therefore, this evening, if by any means or chance you happen to be kicked off my page or they start to disturb it as usual as they would normally do may i recommend that you go to instagram please mazin nam the can official on instagram they have not gotten there yet we are also on twitter mazin nam the can i am on twitter 279.9 thousand followers on twitter please Go there, you will find us. We are also on YouTube. University of Radio Biafra on YouTube. We are there. We are also, of course, on our app, which is IPOB Community Radio. Radio Biafra is working. Radio Biafra app, that is. We are on tuning. We are on a whole host of networks and platforms, if you wish to listen to us, you are more than welcome to do so. Those of you who are in climate of unlimited data, you can go to YouTube, we are there, streaming very clearly. And of course, a whole host of other people are doing exactly the same and hosting watch parties as we move along this very evening. Do not forget your pen and your paper because this is the greatest university on the face of this planet Earth, by none. Here you will learn the truth that will shock you. Sometimes when you hear what we have to say, you may, of course, rightfully so, have need or reason to doubt the veracity of what we are saying. But in the fullness of time, you come to appreciate that everything you hear on this very platform is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We must preach this very gospel because we have been ordained to do so. Elohim in heaven has ordained that we must preach his gospel before the coming of his kingdom on the face of this very earth. That is why I have said to all of you repeatedly, the reason why Britain doesn't want Biafra to come is because Britain believes rather very laughably that should Biafra come, after that the Messiah will come. That is why there is no way they can allow black people to be free. It's impossible for them. And as we well know, once you have the likes of the Janjaweed with you, once you have people who are willing to do whatever it takes to subjugate their own kind, your work becomes a lot more easier. You see, white people don't have to do very much to hold black people down in bondage and in slavery. Not very. All they need to do, they don't need to come to hassle you. They just go to your fellow black people and get them to do the subjugation and the oppression for them which the Fulani Janja with, and to an extent your governors are now doing right across the zoo, not just in the East, but everywhere across the zoo, because they see themselves as being privileged enough to lord it over other people who are less fortunate. This evening, I'm going to start by laying, of course, as we always do, a very firm foundation upon which our discourse this evening shall rest, for you to try to understand the effort that people are putting in into trying to stop IPOB. I want IPOB family members all over the world to understand the pride of place they occupy in the minds of those that yearn for freedom. I want IPOB family members to understand that you are the nightmare that the zoo is afraid of. 
and I'll prove it to you now. Only I forget about all these other chaffs and idiots. It's only IPOB that the zoo is afraid of. Once it comes to Biafra Restoration Project, and I'm going to prove it to you now. I'm going to start by trying to analyze the news that hit the airwaves, or should I say, that was published earlier today by the news agency of Nigeria. Of course, it was syndicated, which means that every news outlet in the zoo is encouraged to carry it. It is from the Minister of Information of the Zoological Republic called Nigeria, that contraption created by a white man, not black people, that racist con construct. United Africa Company from that went to Royal Niger Company. A limited enterprise designed by the British to serve their interests. But unfortunately and very sadly, we black people have refused to learn and to listen. But this evening, I shall remind all of us of our duty and responsibility to one another to try to shed the yoke of neocolonialism, whatever we find it. This headline reads, don't listen to secessionists lie Muhammad tells Nigerians. You must pay particular attention to this. Despite all the raging insecurity in the land, despite the dastardly exploits of ISIS in West Africa, despite the murderous, um, should I say, tendencies of Boko Haram and every other fallen terrorist group, because some of you should not forget that every terror group in Nigeria is owned and financed by the fallen. That is something you must understand. Rather unfortunately, and should I say, rather very pathetically, some of you are yet to come to terms with this very reality. To top up the, the misery for the masses, they control the army, they control the police, they control the customs, they control every arms-bearing agency in the land. Every security agency is in their pocket. And on top of that, you also have the presidency of the zoo that they are now, should I say, um, have complete and total control over. In other words, you people are living in the era of the Fulani rule. You are living in the era of the caliphate without knowing it. Because you don't have elections in the zoo. You don't have any democracy in the zoo called Nigeria. What you have is the rule, a very primitive rule of the Janjaweed. And to make things worse, there is nobody who is actually in charge. And also, I'm going to prove that to you later on, that we are the ones, we are their tormentors. We are the ones that they're most afraid of. No other person. Anything we say on this platform, the zoo, they listen very attentively. They pay very close attention to it. And they do the best they can, either to mitigate it or to try to rubbish what we're doing. And each time they fail, each time they try to make us look bad, they end up looking very, very ridiculous. I'm going to prove it to you this evening. This news broke this evening, was carried by many newspapers around the zoo. If you Google it, you'll be able to see it there. Don't listen to, to secessionists, Lai Mohammed tells Nigerians. He said, do not listen to people who are agitating for freedom. Now, let us proceed. He said this, this very day, today being Sunday, that the federal government was working hard to improve national security and prevent all secession tendencies which means what we told you earlier today about the abductions that they're doing, which happened this evening in Uguta, as a matter of fact. The abductions that they're doing, their concern is not the, the should I say, the Fulani Janja we they imported from the Sahel. No, that is not their concern. Their concern is also not the Fulani bandits who are raping, pillaging, and killing people all over the place. That too is not a concern to them. What concerns them is secession. If you are somebody raised on this warped sense of nationalism, if you're one of these people unfortunate enough um, um, not to reason properly or reason anything through before you embark on either critique or embracing of that very subject or discourse, if you're one of those who are not well educated, you will think that fighting for nationalism in Nigeria, or should I say, uh, um, Preserving Nigeria is a very good thing. But actually, it means you are badly educated, you are ill-informed, and you are highly unreasonable. Why am I saying this? Because Lai Mohammed is telling you that there are problems in uh, groups that are involved in trying to divide Nigeria. But I want to remind each and every one of you that this same lame, weak argument 
was espoused by supporters of the British Empire during our colonial days, the time that the zoo was under colonialism. And having said this thing today, as I'm speaking to you right now, there is a man called Bishop Etete. He's been abducted from Akwaibom this very day. Chinedu Eguono was also abducted in Akwaibom as well. That one was abducted on the 6th of April. Insikak Abase also abducted by the DSS. The reason why I'm making this announcement this evening is that anytime people get upset, these people, they have relatives. Anytime we keep crying and lamenting, and God decides to send his angels, the unknown government, to go and avenge this level of humiliation. Some of you begin to complain and to mutter to yourselves. When Nigerian government themselves are committing high, should I call it, high crimes and misdemeanors, all of you, you keep quiet. How can you go to people's home and abduct them and take them to you, go watch their telephone, their, 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 their mobile phones, we are tracked. Where we lost contact was on entry into Iguacha. They switched off all their phones. That's what they have done. They are now in Iguacha, maybe in DSS or whatever headquarters that the Fulanese have planned for us. And in all these places, you have the Fulanese who are in power. These people are fighting for freedom. The same way that in Nam the Aziki will fought for freedom, should I say to an extent, independence, for the same people today, who are hell-bent on killing everybody, fighting for the same thing that they fought for under British rule. Britain argued, or should I say those that believed in the empire argued that if you allow all these countries, if you allow India to become independent, the jewel in the crown they used to call India, if you allow um, South Africa to go to the Boers, if you allow all these countries in Africa to become independent, that will weaken the British Empire. We are one. We speak English. English language binds us together. The same stupid, spurious arguments being made up by the likes of Lai Muhammad till this very day. Why did we, or why did um, the likes of Azikiwe fight for independence? Why did the likes of Awolowo fight for independence? Why, how come, I'm asking, how come the likes of, um, to an extent, very limited extent, Enahoro fight for independence? Why, Okotiebo, why did they fight for independence? Why didn't they all argue that we should remain in one big British empire, one big family being ruled by the queen? Even when they got independence in 1960, how come in 1963, they argued that the zoo should become a republic? that the queen should no longer be the head of government of Nigeria. Why did you do that? Why is it that now that people are agitating for the exactly the same things that you fought for and agitated for under colonialism, you have issues with it? Let us look at what Lai Muhammad has to say. They are working very hard to improve national security by abducting people today in Uguta. They abducted some people today in Uguta as well, not just in Akwaibom. In Uguta today, they went and they abducted some people there. The man ran away, they took the wife. A woman. This is what Fulani people are doing. Any day now, people become angry and enraged and they react. All of you will come on social media and on the useless newspapers and be yapping rubbish. Today that the DSS are busy abducting people, you will not say anything. And I want to ask you this question. How many Fulani bandits has the DSS abducted before in the past? Shegumi knows where they are. How many of them have been abducted? The answer is zero. Absolute zero. Nothing. He gave this. He was speaking on a radio program. I think it was in Lagos. It's called EB. Abbasade. He urged Nigerians not to listen to IPOB, not to listen to Martin Namdekano. That's what he's doing. He said, speaking specifically on the issues around security, Mohammed said that federal government efforts in that respect necessitated the town hall meeting on security held on April 8th in Kaduna. The people causing the problem are the same people that they went to to have a town hall meeting. In the same state, being governed or being ruled by a man, that midget El Rufai that openly told all of you that he was traveling to Chad, to Niger, to Mali, to go and pay Fulani terrorists and bandits to stop killing all of you. He was the man 
when asked what was happening in southern Kaduna, he said that the Fulanis were exacting revenge. A governor, that was where they held this town hall meeting. I want to let the whole world understand that Nigeria itself is steeped in hypocrisy. There is something, you know, every time I come on air, I keep lamenting about the state or the mental well-being of black people, how we absorb information and how we analyze it. I keep saying this all the time. I don't know if some of you actually sit down to give a, you know, um, 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 deeper reflection on this very issue I happen about all the time. They held a town hall meeting, not in the South, that hasn't been ravaged that much by terrorism, but in Kaduna. The same Kaduna that was the epicenter, the beginning of present day Fulani banditry started in Kaduna, in southern Kaduna. That's where they held this very meeting. That is to tell you that they have taken over your lives. You people are worthless. And I'm saying this with every sense of clarity and sincerity that people in the southern part of Nigeria, you people are slaves, but the funniest thing is that you don't know that you are slaves. You see, in order to occupy you, in order to make you feel relevant, they keep saying, oh, the, the presidency will go to the south in 2023, which means forget about every other thing that is happening to you right now. Focus. It's just like promising somebody you're going to heaven. If you go to church and pay that, you go to heaven. As if they've had anybody from heaven come back to tell them that, hey, I went to heaven. This is what it looks like. They keep promising you 2023. As you're looking at 2023, your land, your forest, your farmlands are being taken over. They are concentrating power upon power upon... Despite the fact that the Fulanese are in control of every facet of life in the zoo, they even pile on more power upon the one that they have already. And all you can do is to talk about one Nigeria. The meeting brought stakeholders together to chat a way forward. Uh, let me ask you, did any of you, were you aware of any meeting being held in Kaduna or that was held in Kaduna on the 8th of April? Stakeholders is basically uh, Fulani people, maybe from Chad, from Niger, from uh, Timbuktu, with the Sultan in charge. They said that they set bench, setting benchmarks for enhanced security and national unity in Nigeria, unity by force. Unity, the same way that Britain tried to hold their empire by force, crush, imprison, kill, jail. It didn't work. It has never worked anywhere in history. And Nigeria is not going to be an exception. It will never, ever work. They said that the, the, their deliberations, or should I say their conclusions, were presented to the Federal Executive Council and state governors on Wednesday and Thursday of this week gone, respectively. Lai Mohammed pointed out that what united Nigeria was more important than, than those issues threatening its continuity. And I want to ask anybody with any sense of, um, I don't know how to put this so that people can actually understand me. I want people to ask themselves this question. What are those things that unites Nigeria. I know some idiot will tell me that an Igbo man trading in Sokoto, in Guzo, in, uh, in Kotangora is what unites you. The same way you have Igbo people running successful businesses right across the whole of Europe and in the Americas. The most successful immigrant race into the United States of America are Biafran people. I think it's an official document, isn't it? The most successful immigrant race into the USA are essentially Biafran people. Are they not doing very well in the USA? They are excelling in the USA. Is anybody in their right senses ever suggesting that we should be one country with the USA because our people are doing very well? I want to be very generous to the likes of Lai Mohammed and all those misguided nationalists that you have in the zoo called Nigeria. It's a very simple question. If you claim that uh, somebody doing business successfully in Medugri or in Bauchi is a panacea, is the, is the reason why we should be together as one country. There are people who are doing very well 
in the UK as we speak, running successful businesses. It doesn't matter if they are Biafrans, they are not Yoruba people doing exceptionally well. These are multi-millionaires in pound sterling. Are you now implying that Britain should come back to recolonize us because there are people who are doing very well in Britain? Simple common sense. I'm sure that you know that the answer is no. So I want Lai Mohammed and all those peddling this fictitious line that now what holds us together is more than what divides us. What is holding us together now is full of any laziness and full of any greed. They are late, should I say, they are literous behavior, blood sucking demonic behavior. They contribute nothing to the national coffers. I keep asking myself all the time, if you sit down and you ask yourself, what is it that the Fulani Janjaweed, especially their so-called elite, are contributing towards the national development of the place called Zoological Republic of Nigeria? The answer is absolutely nothing. All they do is that they steal. The ordinary Alamajiri Janjaweed may move cattle from place to place. At least they provide meat to an extent, to those that want to eat their, their useless poisoned meat. What does a full and ordinary full and janja with so-called elite? All of them that are stealing money and sharing it in Abuja, in Kaduna, in Sokoto and all that. Just tell me what they have contributed. I keep asking this question. Nobody can answer it. Absolutely nothing. But Lai Muhammad is saying that what binds us together is uh, more than what divides us. And he went on to say, listen, we, we are moved by security issues around the country and called for a meeting of all relevant stakeholders on April the 8th in Kaduna. That we have ethnicity issues is not new. I'm quoting verbatim what Lai Muhammad said. That we have ethnicity issues is not new. They started to mention the problems of Nigeria. Number one is the beloved IPOB. Second, Boko Haram. And thirdly, farmer header clashes, not for any bandits. The reason why this animal called Lai Mohammed mentioned Boko Haram is because over the years they tried to coerce Boko Haram to deliver their own agenda, their own jihadist, Wahhabi, Janjaweed agenda, and Shekau said no. That's why they're including them here. And the last but not this is farmer header clashes. You know that it is the Fulanese, they claim the same people that told us that those in our forest killing us in Benue, in Agatu, those in southern Kaduna slaughtering us in Zango Kadaf. They said, they opened their mouth, go and Google it, they said, these are foreigners, foreign headsmen. That was what they said. But today, the Fulani rampaging, kidnapping, killing, raping, murdering people, known as Fulani bandits, they are not included in the list of Lai Muhammad. The number one people to appear there is your beloved IPOB, followed by Boko Haram. For, uh, no, no other people. No, that is why I said to our people, anybody against ESN, you must be sick in the brain. If those people who are clamoring that they want to also provide 5,000 men, if they, if they are serious, if they are a thorn on the flesh of the zoo, they would have been mentioned. Only IPOB. They talk about secession. They talk about IPOB. It's here. These are the words of Lai Muhammad. We, that we have ethnicity issues is not new. IPOB, Boko Haram, and farmer header clashes are not new. All we must do is to look for a way forward. What is that way forward? By fallenizing everybody. By fallenizing everybody. These are the things that some of you must understand. And what they intend to do, as they have done in the past few hours, is to unleash their so-called DSS that can never catch Boko Haram. DSS can never catch ISIS in West Africa province, which is ISWAP. But DSS can never ever catch Fulani bandits. The only people they catch, you'll be in your house sleeping at night. They will storm your place with their darkened hillocks and they're doing cowboy, abducting innocent people who are not armed. You must understand this very carefully what they are doing. That is Nigeria for you. And they claim that they're doing their job. Because we are the people threatening the complete Fulani takeover of the whole of Nigeria. Only IPOB. I'm sorry to say. That is why we are being mentioned. You know what Lai Muhammad said? He said, we are aware of them. 
which means the word of IPOB. The government is working. Cessation is not the way out of our challenges. You don't cure a headache by beheading the patient. The things that unite us in Nigeria are more than what separates us, he said. The minister said that the stakeholders at the town hall meeting in Kaduna came up with some recommendations to further secure and unite the country towards Kaduna. They always unite, unite, unity, unity, unity. Nobody talks about your well-being. Nobody is concerned that Yoruba people are refugees in Benin Republic. Nobody is concerned about what DSS is doing. Nobody is concerned about what goes on at army checkpoints now in Biafra land where people are being slaughtered. Nobody is concerned that the whole of Bende right now as I speak is full of Fulani jihadists with their cattle. Your well-being. Let us not even talk about employment or good roads or good schools or hospitals. That one can never come. We are talking about your own survival as a human being. And do you know why Lai Muhammad was chosen to say all of these things? Now listen to why he's doing it. Lai Muhammad is a Yoruba man, apparently, from Kwara State. But he is a fulanized Yoruba man. He's a Muslim. He's a Mastinubu. Because they are, when they pray, those of them who are learned, they pray in Arabic. When they read their Quran, Quran is written in Arabic. You cannot read the Quran in English. It has to be in Arabic. Pay very close attention to what I have to say. In other words, the fulanization agenda of the caliphate is nothing new to him. Because that fulanization agenda means the recitation of Quran in Arabic for everybody. It means looking towards Saudi Arabia for all that you are as a human being. These are the things you must bear in mind. So to Lai Mohammed and other Kwara Yoruba, uh, uh, should I call them Muslims, it's nothing new. For all they care, the supreme leader of all Muslims in Nigeria is the Sultan of Sokoto. It can never be a Yoruba man. Understand this very carefully. The Sultan of Sogo, the leader of Muslims in Nigeria forever and ever, as long as the zoo stays together as one entity, which it cannot stay, of course. We'll make sure of that. It's going to always be the Sultan of Sokoto. There is no way in this life that the Sultan of Sokoto can ever be a Yoruba man. In other words, Every Yoruba person, including Lai Muhammad, including Tunubu, every Yoruba person, especially a Muslim that subscribes to one Nigeria, they are saying that in perpetuity, the Fulani will lord it over us. Some people may try to draw the analogy with Christianity and say, how about the Pope? There's never been an African Pope, but of course, we're done. at least it is subject to a vote. One day, who knows? A black Pope may emerge. It has nothing to do with us. The same thing that I have against um, um, some of them of the English persuasion when it comes to Christian worship, Anglican Church. There is no way in this life the Archbishop of Can Canterbury, appointed by the Queen of England, can ever be a black person. It's not possible. It is not possible. It can never be done. The same way there is no way in this world that the Sultan of Sokoto, the supreme leader of Muslims in Nigeria, will ever be a Yoruba man. So every Yoruba person canvassing or campaigning for one Nigeria, you are saying that you have double yoke. Obasanjo emerged the Yoruba man as the head of state of Nigeria because the Fulani said so. He came back again and became civilian head of state because the Fulani said so. Should they come emerge because the Fulani said so? When people, when Yorubans wanted their own person to be the president, Fulani said no. Abiola, and he was not the president. What people are doing inadvertently, what people are doing with them is that they are, they, I don't know, they bring this burden upon burden upon themselves without understanding the idiocy of supporting one Nigeria. The reason why I touched upon this is because the only thing Nigeria is a totalitarian state. They give you the misleading and erroneous impression that somehow we are all together in a democracy. Nigeria is a totalitarian state. It's not a democracy. Why am I saying this? 
Now, there is um, insurgency all across the north. Restiveness in the south, so to speak. People are agitating for their freedom. Let me tell you the recommendation that they come up with in Kaduna. The stakeholders recommended that security operatives be equipped with modern equipment to boost efficiency necessary to win the trust and confidence of the people. Who are the people running your security agencies, Fulani? Who are the people causing the problem of insecurity in Nigeria, Fulani? And I, I stand this night and I ask everybody who is in that zoo, every animal in the zoo called a Nigerian, I want to ask a simple question. Just name somebody, one person that reported the activities of Fulani killers and headsmen to any police or divisional police of um, um, headquarters manned by a Fulani person and something was done about it. Four times now, the Fulani headsmen have attacked Enugu. Nine times they've attacked Ebony. At no point during these attacks did the commissioner for police in any of these states, never ever during these attacks did the commandant or the, the head of army at 82 Division ever send soldiers to go and stop the slaughter of the innocent in the villages. Never. But they are there. Their job is to keep Nigeria united, not to secure Nigeria. That is why this evening, as we are live on air, I'm announcing that people should stop traveling in and out of Enugu at night. Now, the Janjaweed are operating between from Loba, 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 given to them by Ojus Okalu. Loba is a, is a terrorist base of the Fulani in our land. But you have governors all over the place. You have people living in Abuja and in Lagos, pontificating and talking rubbish every place there about their beloved one zoo, one Nigeria. This is what is happening in our land. This was exactly what gave birth to Eastern Security Network. They have met in the Akaduna. They have held a meeting. Nobody said we should recall all headers and ban open grazing. Oh, sorry, not to ban, to enforce the ban on open grazing of 1969. Nobody is saying anything about it. No, 1968, and I must correct myself, 1968, they're not saying it. Nobody's saying that the bandits they claim that came from Mali, from Chad, from Niger should go back to their land, no. All that concerns them is security, security, because they need to hold all of you down. As they are pinning you down, the foreigners are coming in and settling in your farmlands and in your forests without you knowing about it. Or you may know, but you cannot speak. Those you are relying upon to speak have been selected by the foreigners themselves to serve their interest. And you call them governors, you call them Igwe, you call them Eze, you call them traditional, you call them local government chairman. These are people, it's a long-running project of the Fulani to select your leaders for you. And they have succeeded. And that is why in our time, in this age that we are in, Fulani killers can go into a Boeing state and kill people. Even the governor will not acknowledge it. The army will come and take away the dead bodies of those killed. So that the world will not know about it. Because if you go to bring, oh, bring me evidence. How am I sure that they kill people in the neighborhood? How am I sure? Meanwhile, the army took away the bodies. But when the Flannies were doing the killing, they were nowhere to be found. After the killing, uh, they communicated, say, oh, we are done now. Come and take the bodies. The army will come and take away all the bodies. This is happening in Biafra. This is happening in Igbo land. But you have governors. You have people that claim they are governors. And they said they launched a the other day to protect our land. Within three days of their launch of their so-called Ebubago, Ebubago was under attack. They never responded. It fell upon IPOB to command the Eastern Security Network to go and do the needful to secure our land. And people don't understand what we are facing every blessed day. Every blessed day. You don't understand because they have limitless number. They have armies coming from these are Fulani. Nigeria has been promised to the Fulani. Britain has given Nigeria to Fulani people. For some of you who do not know, for some of you who are too stupid to understand, Fulani, Fulani own Nigeria right now. And they know there is no border. 
They build railway to Niger Republic. There is no scrutiny, no accountability, nothing. Niger people can come into the zoo and register to vote. They can do whatever they like. And all of you from the south, you're just there looking, saying one Nigeria. Sometimes, you know, out of, sometimes I get very, very upset. And I said to myself, why don't we allow these people to take over the whole of the south so that your eyes can now open? Because some of you are still blind. You're so foolish. You don't understand what is happening. I'll give you a very simple example. I despise Dangote. He is not the richest man in Africa. And I will tell you why. Because he's running a monopoly. In America, he will be in jail. I keep saying this. Every broadcaster come and I tell you. All of you, we are there. Let me tell you what the Fulanese have in store for you. Go into ordinary business. In every sphere of the economy, the Fulani dominate. This, their stranglehold is total. They own over 90% of the oil wells. The reason why they own these oil wells is because people from the coastal region of Biafra land forgot who they are to allow the enemy to come in. That is why Ogoni land is polluted and can never be cleaned. That is why every year resource control, resource control with nothing happening because of the efficiency of divide and rule that they applied. Of course, the British applied. Let me tell you what they have done. Cement. Everybody must buy cement to build a house because of the way the white man taught us to build houses. Whereas before, we used to use clay to build our houses to maintain the temperature inside at 26 or 27 degrees centigrade. And all of a sudden, it's all breeze block. That is a, a conductor of heat. Let's put that to one side. For you to build a house, let me tell you how clever the Fulanese are with their British advisors. Everybody needs shelter at some point. If you're successful in life, you're, going, you're bound to build a house. Even if you don't build, you're bound to rent a house. You're not going to sleep outside. The landlord that built the house or the owner of the house must have built it with the cement. You see how clever they are. The Fulanese thought to themselves, let us control the cement industry. How are they going to control it? By killing off and closing every other cement producer in the country. So that only one man, he's not going to produce the cement, he's going to import the powder and bag it somewhere in Lagos. That's how you have Dangote cement. Over the years. Some of you may have forgotten, but my uncles used to work at Nigerian cement factory at Nkalago, built by Dr. Michael Loper. Niger Sem is called on Kalago cement. Some of you have forgotten, but I'm sure if you're as old as I am, you remember BCC Lions of Boko. Have you forgotten Lion Cement from Benue? BCC means Benue Cement Company. They used to have cement in Benue State. There was Elephant Cement, Ego Cement, Ashaka Cement, Boham Cement, even Ibeto had his own cement. Now, let me, you people complain, they don't have any jobs, they are misclass, they have no jobs. But you people, the same Fulani that you people idiotically voted for, or claim you voted for, are the people that shut down all these factories. They want Fulani to control you. They gave the monopoly, the license to import cement to one single Fulani man. Don't go there. That was why they put Ibeto in prison. EFCC called him and imprisoned him to stop him from selling cement. Only one Fulani, only one, mind you, they're in control of the oil. Only one Fulani man. Some of you are so stupid in Nigeria, I don't know the type of God that made some of you, but I will educate and I will enlighten you. If you listen to us without bias, believe you me, your life can never be the same again. Your brain will open. Let me give you an example of what is happening to you. Before now, there was nothing, and I blame Obasanjo is very stupid. I'm telling you, Obasanjo is an idiot. Obasanjo was the man that rubber stamped some of these things that I'm telling you right now this evening. Not only do Fulanis control the oil well, there were a lot of people, thousands of people working in the refineries. Let me tell you what they did next. They went into the refineries and they shut every refinery down. They went and built a refinery under Abacha in Equatorial Guinea. They went into a consortium with the British and built a refinery in Exeter. 
in England. Now, this crude oil that previously would have been refined in One, in Iguacha, Port Harcourt refinery, in Uwari, or to an extent, Kaduna, now we ship them abroad and made every worker in that place useless, rendered them unemployed. Money wasn't coming in. I want people to understand when Lai Muhammad was saying, what holds us together is more than what you like, all that rubbish, nonsense. I want to tell you how Fulani took over your lives before your eyes, Koro Koro, as you're watching Token One Nigeria, our flag, our team, uh, Super Eagles, Green Eagles, Siglet, talking about the Fulani, we are stealing your lives away from you before your own eyes. Fulani was not content in owning the oil wells. They shut down the refineries where our parents were working, where you could study petroleum engineering, graduate, and find a job to feed your family. That sector was shut down. Remember, they shut down the cement sector. Very critical. Every day there's construction going on, isn't it? It's a very critical sector of the economy. Building raw, raw materials, of course. Fulani, Dangote, one man. Now, let me tell you what they did very cleverly. They came to the petrol, not only the oil well is not enough oh. <laughs> to tell you how much they hate you. They call you a Nigerian, let's unite, but they despise you. I'm going to ask you, they hate you. If not, why would they shut down all these cement factories and allow one man to import? I didn't say produce, import. You will have limestone in Nkalag right now in your boy state rotting away. Shut down. BCC in Niboko, shut down. Maybe you don't could have taken it to rebag, not to produce, not to manufacture cement, but to import cement powder and rebag it. That's all that they do. And they claim they love you. They claim they want to see Nigeria progress. I am, I am, I am doing this program this evening to let the whole world understand that there is no basis for unity in Nigeria because the whole thing is based on evil. And wickedness. Why? Because Fulani people are not hardworking people. They can't wake up by five or four in the morning to go to work. I challenge anybody. All those factories that you see in Lagos, in all those industrial belts, I challenge anybody anywhere in the world to tell me if a ginger weed can wake up by four in the morning to go to work in a factory. I challenge is a challenge to everybody. Show me one. Now listen. They took over cement, which is very critical. They took over oil itself. The only country that people, private individuals, share oil wells amongst themselves. That is not enough. Instead of moving that oil to the refinery to be refined, where we can find jobs to make kerosene available easily, to make um, uh, fuel available to run our car. No, 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 not, not at all. To tell you how evil they are. Those claiming and shouting one Nigeria to tell you how satanic they are. They moved all those jobs abroad by shutting down all the refineries that you have in your zoo country. And who is in charge of NMPC? Fulani in the Kiari family. Understand? Now, you see what they did. They now moved crude oil abroad to the refineries that they built with stolen money from the public coffers. It's not, it doesn't end there. Denying you jobs is not, it's not, the end, it's not even their problem. Now, to bring that refined petrol back into Nigeria, <laughs> you will not pay subsidy again to bring back into the country what left the country for free. <laughs> hey, zoo. Zoo. Only if black people can reason. They took away cement sector, very critical in the building of any economy in the world. They took away oil, which is the only thing that you have, so to speak. They export it, they, they export it and they make money. They bring it back and you pay tax for it. Yet no refineries are working. That is how you have fuel subsidy. The meaning of fuel subsidy is that your refineries are not working. Not that they will not work if you turn them on, but because Full and shut it down that they may control your lives. Two sectors. We must all eat, isn't it? Everybody must feed every day. You have to eat something. 
There is no food you cook in our land without salt in it. No, 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 no. You must add salt now. It's, it's normal. You cannot have tea in the morning without sugar. Dangote. Ordinary Indomie. Dangote. There was a bear friend I met in Netherlands. He wanted to bring Indomie into the zoo. I think he, he brought sample. They arrested him at the airport and put him in jail for trying to disrupt Dangote's stranglehold on the, should I say, the ready meal industry, pasta and all this other rubbish that people eat. Only them, only them, you cannot feed without contributing to full and domination of your life. In religion, those of you who are Muslims, full and is number one. Politics, they are number one. Army, they are number one. The police, they are number one. Everywhere, they are number one. Anytime you talk, unity, unity, unity. They hit you, they kill you, they arrest you, they shoot you, anything, they, unity. Because they know what they're benefiting. The final game is to hand over our land and our forest to their brothers and sisters from the Sahel. And it's happening before our eyes. One shut down. Refinery that could have employed millions of people. Ibocha down, Ware down, even Kaduna. Who built Kaduna refinery? Isn't it all They asked me, said he's, he's diversifying the location of major industries. He was he wanted to please the full and masters that put him in power. They built Kaduna refinery. You have to move oil all the way from the south to the north. They can pipe oil to the north oh, and everywhere else, oh, but they cannot pipe clean water to your homes. They cannot pipe gas to your homes. And they claim, they tell you, we protect one Nigeria. We are all Nigerians. We are going to make progress. Progress how? For how many years? How can you make progress by shutting down industries that employ people, rendering them unemployed, and importing into the country finished items and products that you could have produced in your country? Are you listening to me? So what Lai Muhammad is saying is rubbish. He was born in Elon and I'm sure he's a Muslim. So to him, uh, Islamic rule is nothing. In fact, he'll welcome it. He's a Muslim. That is why he is pushing for the caliphate agenda that they may dominate our lives. And as I said before, and as one man also said, you cannot in this life control a people unless you have somebody on the inside doing it for the oppressor. I want you to listen to this very clip tonight. Listen very, very attentively. Listen to it attentively. Of course, they can attack my Facebook page or the like. They're wasting their time. After this program, I'll quietly put the SoundCloud there. You can go there and listen to it. If you want to listen to us, I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm on Twitter. We are on our app, which is um, IPOB Community Radio app. We're on everywhere. If you want to, we're on YouTube, of course. If you want to listen, you can listen. I want to play something for all of you. Listen. Listen to this very, very carefully, please. I want you to listen to what I have to play now. I started playing it prematurely. And I've, I've not forgotten those who are doing their fundraising in Maryland, in the United States of America, of course. I do commend each and every one of you who are participating this very afternoon. I think it's afternoon in Maryland. It is afternoon in Maryland. It's about 3 p.m. in Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. All of you who are participating, all of you who are participating, I say well done to all of you. Well done to all of you who are participating at the fundraiser event in Maryland. We need it. And not once, it has to be continuous, please. When you pay tax, you don't pay tax once, it's continuous. We need to defend our land. It has fallen to us to defend it. And we are doing it very, very gallantly, I assure you. We are fighting a whole host of enemies, your stupid governors, your some foolish igwes. We are fighting a full foolish. We are fighting informants. We are fighting... We are also fighting the zoo army, the zoo, everybody. Only this noble family. And if Elohim is not with us, how can we make the progress that we have made so far? I want you to listen to what this man has to say. He's a preacher, I'm telling you. A preacher of the truth. The conquest of a black man, the enslavement of a black man couldn't have been possible without another black man. After listening to this, you tell me the difference between 
those that sold us as slaves in the past and the governors and the so-called leaders you have now. No difference. It's only that we have come to say that enough is enough. We can no longer tolerate this rubbish. That's all. I want people to pay close attention to this program this evening. Pay very close attention. In fact, listen to it 10 times over to understand the hopelessness and the idiocy of the brain of a black man. Anybody who believes in Nigeria, believe you me, that person is not worthy to live as a human being. Listen to this. Very, very carefully, please. Listen. Traditional leaders and the slave trade. Slave trade. We blame the whites for the slave trade we went through. We blame the whites that they offended us. They took us as slaves. But let's wait for a minute. Who sold the black man to the whites? Who sold the black man to the whites? Our own traditional leaders. The enemy is not outside. The enemy is within. Always inside. We are asking the Europeans to pacify us and offer to apologize to us. Our traditional leaders must be the first to apologize on behalf of their ancestors for the evil they have done against their fellow blacks. Look at our attitude towards the environment and the destruction of our water bodies. All our river bodies have turned into dark brown. And you know what they said? In the next 20 years, if we don't stop this illegal mining, Ghana, we will import water to drink. Yet we don't care. And Chinese, they will come from their country into our forest, destroy our forest, destroy our land, and illegally mine and damage our waters. How can they come? If the traditional leaders didn't give them permission to do that. And in one instance, while they were dead, our military went there to protect them. Our own military <laughs> Africa. was supposed to protect us. Is your G black. Oh, Lord have you. To destroy our water and destroy our forest. The enemy is not outside. The enemy is within. If you look at our own systems and structures in our country, we don't have a better system to improve the lives of people. Pastor, I was surprised when I read in China, they had a 10-year vision. And they said from 2011, their vision was that in 10 years from 2011, and 10 years from 2011 will be what year? This year, 2021. That they will raise over 20% of the people to become multi-millionaires. Now in 2021, they have 1.8 million Chinese who are multi-millionaires in China, and they are between the age of 40 to 50 years. Multi-millionaires. The government intentionally decided that they will make sure they will have 20% of the population multi-millionaires. They also agreed that they will make sure that they will lift up the poorest of the poor, and they lifted 100 million people from begging to live a better life. But in this country, in our country, we fight our own businessmen. Our government will fight our business people. When they know that your business is thriving, and they know that perhaps you are not sympathetic towards the running party or the ruling party, they will fight you, collapse your company, and make you poor. When in China, they want to make the people rich. In Africa, we want to make our own people poor. The enemy is not outside. The enemy is within. Look at the African do you now understand it? Very clear. A preacher from Ghana preaching the word of God. This is what I call preaching. Not all that nonsense. Uh, they talk about the 40 million auditorium rubbish. They can never speak the truth. Imagine if every, every Sunday in the churches that you have in the south, even in the middle belt, the priests were to climb the pulpit and repeat exactly what this man is saying. There will be a revolution overnight. What the preacher did not say is that in China, before China became what they are today, there was a revolution by the people. Do you understand? This video is uh, very clear. The enemy with black people, the enemy is always within. It's a good thing he's preaching from Ghana. The people that conquered Nigeria for the white man are Ghanaians. The West Africa frontier force is from Ghana, recruited from Ghana to come and fight. Fought us at uh, Bini, fought us all the way at Harochuku. Ghanaians, 
recruited by white people. The same way we have today, those fighting a better tomorrow for our children are the so-called governors, so-called Igwe, so-called idiot, a beggar who lives in Lagos, writing rubbish, claiming he's an intellectual. Compare the future they're offering you to the future that we are offering you. We are offering you a future of employment, a future where the vision of the government will be to produce, let's say, 2,000 millionaires every blessed year. The leaders of China are not making these millionaires for themselves, not the politicians, no, no, ordinary people, because they love their people. Look at what is happening where we come from. They impoverish their own people. Chinese, how can you build billionaires without industries and factories? But in the zoo called Nigeria, the lives of Ibeto are being impoverished. People who could have been millionaires are being impoverished so that the Fulani that is so work shy and lazy can ascend the throne of power riding on our collective ignorance. That is why I hate Nigeria. Not that I hate the people in it or anything of that sort. It is the pervading ignorance that I find almost debilitating, I'm telling you. It is shocking. How long are we going to continue this way? They held their meeting in Cardinal. Nobody talked about youth unemployment. Nobody said, how are we going to get our children meaningfully employed? You claim you love your children. There are no jobs for them when they leave university. You have not sat down to strategize, to say, how do we provide? It is your job as a politician to provide jobs, at least to create the enabling environment to allow industries to, to, to thrive. But it is not happening because you don't love the people. That is why your first three cause is DSS arrest, army shoot. Because you are a tyranny. You people don't deserve to live. And until we rise above all this nonsense, the, 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 the country or the, the homes where we come from that we are likely to be quit to our children will be far more worse than that that we have encountered. In a country where hard work should be encouraged, encouraged, where millionaires should be encouraged to emerge, because every millionaire has to employ somebody, even a house girl, or a house boy, or a gardener, or a cleaner. Somebody is earning money and paying tax. So it is in your interest that you have that everybody is well off. But in Africa, we think that it has to be only us, only me and my family, me and my people, only us, only me who have the, uh, uh, only upstairs in the village. It's not very good. The way we reason is very bad. Before our eyes, E. Beto was persecuted to extinction. He did nothing wrong. He's a businessman. He did nothing wrong. They squashed him. Some of you don't know in a place called Numan, N-U-M-A-N, Numan. In Gongola State, in those, I think they, I don't know what they call it. What is Gongola State now? I don't know what they call it now. Is it, uh, is it Yobe? There was a place called Savannah Sugar Company. My uncle, the Maham Yifle, used to work there. I was to go there on holidays and I was told that the company has been shut down. Savannah Sugar Company in Newman. Do you know they used to produce sugar? In Yobe State, Yobe, Yobe, they used to produce sugar there. Nobody is coming up and saying, let us revive this yoga. It will give our people jobs. You know, with sugar, you do a lot of things with sugar anyway. Some of you don't know that the rum you drink, you know, the southern comfort you take. You know, rum, southern comfort. It's sugar from sugar cane. You don't know that sugar is alcohol. You don't know that? Hey. Sorry, Zadama, what they say, Zadama, I do apologize. You know, I don't know which is which. I don't know which is Taraba, Adama, all this rubbish, all these stupid, idiotic names they come up with. I used to know Gongola State. In Gongola in those days, there is a place called Newman. If Fulani Janjaweed were working in the sugar factory, what time would they have to go and do banditry? Lai Mohammed and his so-called uh, intelligent stakeholder group will not discuss this. You have stakeholders who are themselves bandits, economic bandits and criminals, holding down your fortune and your future on the ground without any of you knowing about it. There is a place, the largest textile mill in West Africa was in Kaduna, built by Amadou Bello. It shut down. Today, import textiles from abroad. 
who learned them from settlement from where the Malaysians came and learned how to plant uh, 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 palm tree. Run down. Some of you, I, I said this thing many years ago, some were in a shock for days. Let me repeat. Do you know that Nigeria imports palm oil? We import palm oil from the same Malaysia that we taught how to, <laughs> how to process oil, palm oil. And the people responsible for this destruction of our future will stand up and say, eh, eh, we love you, we love Nigeria. I mean, come on, for goodness sake. Are we that foolish? Are we that stupid? I'm asking all of you. That is why they don't want us to preach. That is why Facebook will suppress, remove people, make things as horrible as it is. But had Mark Zuckerberg been a zoo product, his invention or his creation will not see the light of day. He will not be a multi-billionaire today. People don't understand what we are fighting. We are not just fighting so that we can be free. We are fighting to set other people free, to create a future that our children can remember and say, our fathers did this in our time. The same way that the Chinese are doing for their people. Every blessed day, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't criticize them anymore because they're doing the best they can for their own people. Are you blaming them? Including eating our, eating, eating our penises. If that is what makes them fine, so be it. Somebody will come to Africa, kill his own flesh and blood, a fellow African, cut off his penis and sell to the Chinese. And you're telling me that we are normal. Somebody is somehow telling me that uh, such, such satanic creation like Nigeria should stand. I asked Lai Muhammad, they have never, since they came into power, I have never heard them one day, this useless idiotic APC say to themselves, how do we generate employment? I criticize Babangida all I like. But I recall very, very well. In fact, I believe that Babangida's economic blueprint was the best that the zoo had ever seen as a centrally run political entity. Not when they had the regions. And you know the funniest thing? Those who are against um, secession, so to speak, in their language, those who are against autonomy or freedom for the regions. The only time that Nigeria came close to attaining its potential was when everybody was on their own. Go and ask, consult your history books. Dr. Michael Lopez's economy was 40% every year, the fastest growing in the world. I will always perform the miracle in the West. When I mean miracle, I mean miracle that you cannot even believe what the man was able to do with ordinary cocoa. Transformed the entire, the entire West was transformed. Built the first stadium. Even the Janja with the uh, Amadou Bello and Tafa do you know what they did in the north? Go and look at the factories that they built in the north. When people look back with nostalgia at what Nigeria could have been, they were looking at Nigeria when the regions had their own government, when the regions had their own embassies abroad. These are the things they don't teach you in schools. But if you're fortunate to be listening to us, then you're highly blessed. And all these people who have a hand in sabotaging their own people. And as I said, sometimes I don't think there is anybody anywhere on this earth that has come close to matching the accuracy of everything that we pronounce. You know, when I say it, you don't believe me. Some of you may remember when I used to say to Rocha Sokrotia, you come back in shame. You see this planet you're serving, they will disgrace you. The same thing I said to Lai Muhammad. All of you fools that think that by serving the fallen, somehow one Nigeria, your life will be better. I want to read out a story concerning Rochas Krochabora Wosa that you may understand. This is the idiot that locked up our mothers in order to please his flanny masters. Now let us read and understand what is happening to him today. Uh, EFCC releases Okorocha after two-day detention grilling. The same man that rigged election in Imo State for his master. This Janja with master. This is the same man. This is the same man, the same human being that locked up our mothers in our way because they were protesting that I should be released from detention. This same idiot. He was preaching Nigeria to us. One Nigeria, how we need to be together. Nigeria has to go as, as we talking rubbish. And of course, with his bra, you know, he wears a bra. Idiot. This fool. I told him, he didn't listen. Now, let us hear 
what his Fulani masters did to him. As I said to you, how many years ago did I say that? You will serve, all of you that serve the Fulani Janja would have served, you will come back in shame. He is the chief servant of the Fulani. After disgracing the other servant, Rogers or Carlo, they disgraced this idiot as well. Let us read. A former governor of Imo State, Roger Sokoracha, on Thursday said he left the facility of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Okorocha spokesperson Sam Owemodo in a statement on Thursday evening disclosed that Okorocha, who now represents him West at the Senate, is in his house. The statement said Okorocha, two days stay in EFCC detention, offered him the opportunity to respond to allegations of financial fraud leveled against him. He served the Fulani. He thought they would protect him. They have another slave in, uh, in the Salikin Fulani of Imo State, who opposed them. Hope was another said to them, oh, take my brother, punish him, jail him. Their only strength comes when they are fighting their own. Isn't it very funny? They can never fight outsiders. The only time for you to prove for the full land that you're a good slave, you must fight your own people. I have uh, everything against Ukurocha, but I'm against full and persecuting him. It sounds bizarre coming from me, but yes. One day you will understand the reason why. They always enjoy, they laugh, they laugh. Look at all the looters and the... Money is being withdrawn from CBN. NMPC has never... Uh, they have not accounted for one penny for the last seven years. You people call it looting. If you steal one billion dollars, no. Full and in loot in dollars and in pounds and in euros. Nothing. No one has ever invited the Kiari family to come to EFCC. Of course not. You, all of you keep disgracing yourselves. You had ESN. You have ESN that all of you should kill behind. All of you we are doing yourselves who will be the best Fulani slave. So they will hear your name on TV or on newspaper and they will say, hey, this is our slave. Let's go and give him some more money. That's all you people are doing. You can never fight Fulani the way we are fighting them. None of you can. Because if you do, you will lose your relevance. Okorocha has been disgraced. Look at him shouting, he is presidency. He is, is there, rotate you and come to us. And one year to the end, and guys just catch the idiot and put the, the, the Osan in a prison and it's finished. Detention to tell you are nobody. The only people that can defend you is your people. The sooner the idiots understand this, the better for everybody. The only people who can defend you in your time of need is the same people that you're selling out today. A very timely lesson for everybody who claims is a governor who is serving right now. And we received also very distressing information from Bend. Uh, there is a young man in Bend, uh, the Bend uh, local government and his um, deputy. Some villages in Talaku in Bend, the government is empty of all young people. The Janja would have taken over the entire place. Some of you know, it's, they, some of you don't even know the news that is happening in your villages. You are in Lagos and Abuja, shouting one Nigeria. You don't hey, call, make a phone call to the village. Some of you in America, some of you call the village tonight. Just a very simple question. Um, uh, can you tell me uh, where the Fulanis are, you know? being kept or harbored in our village, they will tell you. One single signal and everybody's gone. Britain will give money to, in fact, Fulani will give money to Britain to give to CNN, to give to BBC, nobody will talk about it and you're finished. Look at the slaughter at Agatha. Look at what is happening in Benway. Look at how they slaughtered people in jobs. You people have no idea. For very many years, consistently, Fulani kept attacking, kept attacking until they overwhelmed. Blatu. The same thing is happening in Kaduna. It's something they're going to do to you. If not, that uh, uh, my heart and my mind can, won't allow me to let the Fulanis overrun our villages. I won't let that happen. No matter how stupid some people are, I can't allow that to happen. Because it's another way of the devil saying, uh, you know, prodding us to say, uh, so one day out of anger, I will say, okay, I'm no, we'll no longer defend our land. Fulani, come and take it. Fulani will take it. After all, before the Fulanis attacked, I was the one who made them to attack first. I said to them, if the Fulanis had any brain, they will attack now and take over our land. And they, 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 not up to three weeks they came. And they're still there till today. 
and we are flushing them out. The people who are betraying you are your own people. A white man couldn't have colonized Africa if not for the stupidity of a black man. We could not, today we have blacks who are suffering in America, slaves all over the Caribbean. Of course, from our, these are free people that the British and the Europeans converted to their slaves. Because a black person sold them. That is why I don't believe in all this reparation, uh, blaming a white man for slavery, I don't blame them. Our own stupid, any day black people look themselves in the mirror and say, I am the problem from that day you will change. From that day you will change. Look at people who claim they're leading you in the zoo, in APC government, telling you every day unity, security, security, security summit, security, unity summit, security summit. Uh, nobody talks about jobs or housing or social amenities. No, security yeah, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, unity. Because a black man is wicked. I'm sorry to tell you, we are wicked, I'm telling you. Evil upon evil. All these people, they know, even Lai Mohammed knows that the greatest time that Nigeria ever had was when everybody was on their own. So me, the fact Nigeria was a confederation. The East, the North, the West, and after time, the Midwest. If there was competition. If I want to build a factory, cement factory in the West, or I want to build something in the East, Tafa uh, Balewa wants to build, uh, Amani Balewa wants to build something in the North. If there was competition, competition every day we talk about uh, liverpool chelsea this how do you know all these things because they are competing but when it comes to the zoo allow us to compete in nigeria let everybody they say no 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 no. one nigeria one mediocrity that is why if you don't learn anything here you will not learn anything in your whole lives and the people in the zoo are suffering and sometimes i wonder if our senses are not correct. Is it that, we, that when we did all these things that are uh, happening everywhere, we don't, uh, what is wrong with us? Things are happening everywhere. Residents who fled Damasak return alleged molestation by Niger Republic soldiers. In Nigeria, you're being raped and shot at every blessed day. You run to Niger Republic, the same thing that you're facing. You know, sometimes you begin to ask yourself, has God forgotten black Africa? Or <laughs> we must have done something. I think the rest of Nigeria should join us anytime we are doing atonement. We, something has gone wrong somewhere. Some of the residents that fled when Fulani terrorists attacked Bronu State, they fled to Niger Republic. They have started returning back to the area. But mind you, those they attacked you know, by Fulani terrorists in Yoruba and some of them are still in, in Benin Republic. They said that the governor of the state spent the night in Damasak to ensure the safety of the people. But uh, uh, what we saw in Niger Republic, we don't want, even if he, one of them said, even if the terrorists are coming to kill us again, we would rather stay here and die than face what we faced in Niger Republic. Black people in Niger. They saw vulnerable women and children, most of them Shua Arabs, who are in Brno, most of them Kanuri, fleeing from terrorism. They ran into Niger Republic. The, the soldiers of Niger said, Hallelujah, they have come. They lined them up and started raping them. The same thing. Remember what I said what goes around comes around. The way they raped our women from Obibo is how the mothers of those that gave birth to the vagabonds that raped our women are being raped in Niger. What goes around comes around. You know, the thing about Nigeria and Nigerians is that they're so stupid. They are the most stupid people on the face of this earth. I, I consider your average Nigerian as the, as the embodiment of stupidity, embodiment of idiocy. They cannot reason. When you were busy raping other people's wives, sisters, Mothers from people that we can send to all of you in the north to go and rape to your heart's content. You never knew, you never thought that such a thing can happen to you. But it has happened to some of your mothers now in Brno to the extent that they are saying they would rather die inside the Brno state than run again to Niger Republic. 
This is the time for everybody to come together to free ourselves. The likes of Lai Mohammed, they have their houses in Dubai, in London, in USA. They have no interest in your future. When they talk about unity and security, it is to secure their oil wells, to secure their monopolies that they have over your lives. Not because they love you. Not because they love you. Nigeria is the worst evil. On Nigeria is, is, is worse than evil. Worse than evil. We must continue. We must continue. They swore. We would rather be killed by Boko Haram in Damascus than return to the Nigerian Republic where we were subjected to various inhumane treatments by soldiers. So in your country, when your soldiers are subjecting people to inhumane treatment, you are clapping for them. You are clapping for them. So you want the Nigerian Republic to welcome you? No. What goes around comes around. Your sons, your, your full and sons and daughters are busy raping and killing people. The same thing they have done to you in Niger, the public. So now you understand. So now you understand that being evil and being wicked is not good. This is a very great lesson for the so-called governors to learn. A great lesson for them to learn because one day they will leave office. One day, if we don't get you now, one day we're going to catch you. <laughs> Result of me. Nobody stood up to condemn Wike for sending our mothers to the north to be raped. Everybody is quiet. Okay, we'll, we'll wait and see what is going to happen. What and see what is going to happen. Everything I tell you here is gospel. It is the truth. You can never fault it. Nobody can. You can never ever fault, not one single thing I tell you. Remember when uh, my Facebook was on fire before? Did you say I, I told you Facebook is working with them. And sadly, most of those that work for Facebook are Yoruba people. Yoruba are young people. You would expect them to, to do that which is right. But so, you know, there's that thing in us, black people. You know, our evil, our wicked evil nature is, is natural. That is why a young person will leave school. They recruit you into Facebook and your job is to suppress the truth. Why did Twitter go to, to Accra, to Ghana? Because in Nigeria, they suppress the truth. Yet they will not learn. They will never ever learn because they are not as smart as they should be. They are not as smart as they should be. They keep cutting off, keep suppressing, keep doing everything they can, but we keep going back. We keep going back and preaching the gospel of heaven because no bagger, nobody can stop us. You can't stop us. We are unstoppable. The sooner you realize it, the better for you. And after Oduduwa becomes free, which is going to be, Oduduwa will be free. I am sure that Oduduwa, they will go and fish out all their people that work for Facebook and put them in jail. That would be the best thing to do because they're evil. The young people working for Facebook they are, the, their mentality was what made it possible for the white man to leave Europe to come to Africa to conquer everybody. They think they are doing the right thing, but they are making a very bad situation worse. And we must tell them the truth. We have to tell them the truth. I told the whole world that this boy, the boy you have now is not Jubril, representing Buhari. Some of you pretend you don't know. The president is back. Buhari is back. Hi, Chai. This Yoji, I will not meet some of you people in my, in my next life. If there is anything, I will not meet some of you. No wonder they, they, you can be colonized by anybody. I'm sure if the Chinese you have to bring their religion tomorrow, some people will be going there to go and die for them. As I told you before, I remember, I think it was Reverend Jim Jones in um, Guyana in those days that killed a lot of black people because stupid, wretched black people did believe that a white man, uh, Jesus can only be a white man, not a black man. He told them to take poison and they all took poison and they died. Reverend Jim Jones, I'll never forget, from Guyana in those days because he's a white man. <laughs> hey, black. I told you before that the man wearing the mask now is claiming his Buhari, a young boy. His name is Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad. His name is Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad. 
you know, you know the mask, the fake mask, the, the plastic mask you wear, the Buhari's face, the hyper reality face mask. They couldn't make the ear to be very strong. So now when the boy came back from Britain, Britain gave a special um, N95 mask for him so he can breathe. So you can't even know if it's Buhari again or not for some of you who are already confused, but we know it is not Buhari. He is no longer anchors the mask behind his ear is now around his neck at the back of his head because we exposed him that if he puts that thing on his ear, his ear will be bent because it's rubber. It's not real. Go and look at the new... People should circulate that very picture. Go and look at the new mask he's wearing. Not Buhari's hyper-reality face mask. The COVID-19 mask he's wearing, he no longer puts it behind his ears. It's now behind his head, uh, around his neck. That goes to show that everybody listens to what we say. Everybody, they listen to us. That is why they have learned. They are now anchoring it around his neck, no longer behind his ears. And they say, welcome, Baba. A small boy. He is now shorter than the, the, dead, the late dead boy. Uh, no wonder Dangote can come and take over all your cement needs, so to speak. Shut down every factory. Sugar the same. Salt the same. All of you. And you're there shouting one Nigeria. It's just mad in Africa, one Nigeria. I have never seen a bunch of more idiotic people than Nigerians. He has a new mask now. Because he, as somebody said, he's on a pure, <laughs> a mixture of pure oxygen, nitrous oxide, the chlorine, and phosphorus to breathe. <laughs> oh, dear me. I don't know if those of them in Maryland can hear me, those who are doing fundraising for the gallant men and women defending the land of Biafra, Eastern Security Network, ordained by heaven itself. Once again, allow me to commend all of you who are gathered and also to tell you, anybody who is fundraising, please, make sure that you report everything that you're doing to our sister and then Nayanya, very, very important. And also, if you're doing so in the USA, to report to our finance officer in the USA, Madam Oyibo. And if we wait for you and you don't come to us, we will let loose the asset recovery team, and you will not like it. You won't like it. So make sure every fund you have raised is sent to us, please. I know that somebody was responding. Those that stole our money were responding. They said, oh, but we sent this to this. We said, yes, you may have sent, yes. We checked all the statements. The money that you remitted for people who are in detention, people we are releasing from detention is there. But there is a surplus, which you didn't account for, which you stole. Because you know, we do she, two criminals in Georgia. Do she a boy. They think that uh, they can be uh, clever by half. You are dealing with people who are more intelligent than you. We went, I went through the whole statement. I saw the ones that you sent, you remitted. And I saw the ones that you stole, you did not account for. It came to 77,000 before you stole the last 4,000, only last week. Did you steal 4,000 last week or not? Ndushi. It was Rumba and Wokenko, two criminals at large. And their lives would be a misery, I assure them. Ndushi. I want the zoo people to understand something that eh, the Fulanis are in control of your lives. Why we walked against Jonathan in 2015, according to one useless idiot called Babangida Aliyu, the governor of Niger State. They said that the Fulani is, the, of course, they control the whole of the North. The Middle Belt, I don't know what is happening to them. <laughs> Those people, they get confused sometimes. I feel sorry for them, honestly speaking. I feel sorry for them. Babangida Aliyu has revealed why the Northern governors under PDP, Jonathan's own party, have you heard of that? I want this is where I want all these governors, we can include all these idiots claiming that governance is that to be able to reason very well. Do you know that a PDP governors, Jonathan was the PDP candidate, PDP governors who are from the north, core north, of course, full and Janja with north. They did not vote for him. Instead, they voted for another party, the candidate of another party from their own lineage. I want people from Niger Delta, people, people who idiotically and foolishly claim Niger Delta. Are you listening to me? 
they did not vote for Jonathan. According to them, Jonathan said he would only contest for one term. That was a revelation that this man made. Do you see the way they fall in the north to gang up to see how they love themselves? All of you in the south, you're bickering and fighting like a crab in a bucket in Shiko. Anyone who wants to climb, you drag that one down. You see how the front of governors are going. Even though they are in PTPO, they voted for Buhari, their own person, their own man, against Jonathan, who is from the so-called South, 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 stroke Niger Delta, whatever that rubbish that means. What is their reason, they said? They said because uh, Jonathan uh, said he will only you know, be there for one term of elected office because he was he took over after, after Yeradua died, I think for about two or three, but for about two years. Then he contested, he won, and he was there for four years. Fulani said, you promised us. If Fulani, they're always good at remembering what you promised them, but they can never remember what they promised you. <laughs> so Jonathan was kicked out, yes? Now, they claim that, uh, you know, it was um, Jubril that was that came in 2019. Before now, this little boy took over the wearing of the mask. The mask you are now is, um, is um, Yusuf Abubakar Mohammed from Niger Republic, the boyfriend of Aisha Bukhari, not, not um, um, Jubril, Jubril ran away from, from Cuba at the height of COVID-19 when Abakiari died. One day, all these things will be revealed from sources that I'm sure you will believe. Then some of you will say that this is a prophet. Maybe, but then it will be too late for some of you. Now, listen very carefully, please. The same people that voted, that claimed they voted for Buhari in 2015 and voted for him again in 2019, forgot something. And I will quote for them. Nigeria's Buhari said he would not seek re-election in 2019, according to the minister. This news was carried by Reuters. The same Buhari, you claim, of course, Buhari died in 2017, we know all of that. The same Buhari, in whose name you're running Nigeria, said, I will only contest for one term. The same thing that Jonathan said. And your excuse for supporting Jonathan is that he said, or he reneged on his promise to only run for one term. The same thing with your so-called Buhari. But you voted in Jubril <laughs> under the tutelage of Abakiari in 2019. Is that not correct? Or the other about? Is that not correct? So you did not remember the promise that Buhari had made. He would only run for one term. But you remember the one that Jonathan said. That was in, that's why you didn't support him. But you supported your own kind. <laughs> of course, uh, Jubril wearing Buhari's mask. That is full and for you. I'm saying this because of the idiots in the South who cannot reason. Full and is they go in, they arrange everything. They get a lost soul in Lai Mohammed to dish out the lines for some of you. They pay some Yoruba journalists. They pay them, give them money. And they forget who they are. They forget their job. And today... Everybody is suffering. I have told those who are on Facebook, on my page, live there, because Facebook is frustrating everybody. Live there and go to Instagram or you go to Twitter or you download the app. Download the Wi-Fi app, it's very cheap. Very, very cheap. I don't know, some people cannot listen. Leave Facebook alone on my page, that is, I know others are listening on other platforms. Leave Mazen Nam, the kind of official. Leave it alone for them. Let them be hearing me because Facebook is listening to me right now as I, as I preach this gospel of heaven. They cannot remember what uh, Buhari promised to, but remember Jonathan's own. That's why they kicked him out. These people are congenital liars. Full of politicians and the idiots they have groomed in the South. They are all liars. And the only way to solve this problem is a revolution. Revolution. A very bloody revolution. And when it starts, don't read newspapers. 
Because Tinubu will give them money to be that thing. Is this tribe that did it? Is that ethnic group that did it? No. Once the revolution, every, believe you me, no newspaper should publish. Only a revolution can save the people. Or else you are all doomed. Because they are all liars and deceivers. These are the same people that say, oh, build alliance with us. Uh, Niger Delta, build alliance with us for 2023. Ah, the same alliance that he was built. And despite all the things that Jonathan did for all of you, Alamajiri, you still burnt his billboard, attacked his convoy violently. Nobody was shot dead. Nobody was shot dead. And all of you in the South, you have all forgotten. Oh, my God. Don't allow Fulani DSS, their army and police and others behind the formation of Abu Bagu to deceive any of you. There are some hotel building freedom fighters who may join them. It is a grand conspiracy to set our land on fire, brother against brother, sister against sister. They have started with the abductions. Any day we pray and our prayers are answered, people will start complaining. But now that DSS is moving from house to house, abducting people, all of you are deaf and dumb. You're all blind. You cannot see it. Any day we react now, people will start shouting their rubbish as usual. Insecurity, insecurity. Now DSS is making us to feel insecure. None of you will complain. Of course, you're black people. It was your likes that sold us during slavery. It was your lives that brought in the white man after, should I say, being given chieftaincy title, warrant chief. Black people, sometimes try and love yourselves. I don't know what is wrong with you people. Try and love yourselves for once and do that which is right. Nobody in their right senses should join any Ebube rubbish. ESN is there. We will take you. We have too many Fulani terrorist settlements to clean in our land. So you must come and join Eastern Security Network. I think there, there was a, um, a, a radio station that did a poll of what the people of the East want. They said it's ESN. They, they said it openly. We don't trust the governors. If not for ESN, nobody would have thought about this. It would be rubbish. That they claim they when have you seen them before? They are floating something. Have you seen any men? Any show me one thing to say that this is what is even their telephone number if you're in distress? If you're being raped by Fulani and you escape, how which number are you going to call? They keep playing with your brain, and some of you keep falling for it, and you claim you are educated. And I want to, to say or to repeat what the former Senator Shehu Sani wrote. I had to truncate it because it was very long. Some of you in the zoo called Nigeria do not understand this. In the US they do, in Europe they do, elsewhere they do, only those in the zoo called Nigeria. Whoever is elected to represent the people and the people that he claims he represents are being persecuted oppressed, killed, or kidnapped. And he chooses to cowardly remain silent or sit on the fence out of fear of losing his seat or, or, or upsetting or even offending a certain power or authority or mortal God. That person is morally unworthy and undeserving of the seat he occupies. In a nutshell, this is from Shehu Sani, it's not from me, please. Quote him. I am quoting what Sheikh Hussani wrote. All the politicians you have in the East, they are not worthy of the city they occupy. They are there to protect you. Have they ever protected you? I keep asking you this question all the time. When our sister was killed and cut up into pieces at Huli, what did Obia not do? Now that you are being attacked, attacked in a Boeing state, what is Dave Omahi doing? In Enugu, we are being slaughtered every blessed day. What is the governor over there doing? Or is it in Abia State? And they claim they represent you. They claim they are fighting for you. Yet people are coming to kill you and are killing you. 
They have not done anything till today, even with their boastful of bag of rubbish, audio, security. They have done nothing. And you still believe in them or trust them, then there is something fundamentally wrong with you. Therefore, ESN is all that we have, and we must guard and protect it jealously. I want to sound a note of warning to all those in the diaspora. I know that some of you mean very well for what we are doing on the ground, especially our men on the front line. Nobody wants to hear that our men are hungry or that they are sick, they're not receiving the right treatment. Nobody likes that. But I want to warn all of us in the diaspora, please. Very, very important. Stop calling people who are on the front line. You must desist from contacting commanders on the ground from today. No more. Because it breeds insubordination and ill discipline, which we cannot afford right now. If there is any complaint, very soon a number is going to be released. The command of ESN flows from me to our high command, to our general on the ground who now gives instructions to the men in the field. We don't want a contamination of that chain of command. You may mean very well, no doubt. And all those who are in the business of doing videos, complaining to people in the diaspora, you must stop forthwith. You must stop it immediately. We are not going to tolerate or allow that nonsense to continue. If you are an operative of ESN or a commander, I must also warn you, please, not to contact those abroad unless you are instructed to do so by your state commander. In every state, the state commander is paramount. What he says goes. In the fullness of time, if he's not doing it very well, we will know and we will seek to correct it. Stop speaking to those who are in the diaspora. The zoo can plant people abroad to know where we are. You don't know. After talking to them, you compromise your position. It will be attacked already. Please, that nonsense must stop tonight. I don't want any meddling in the affairs of our men on the ground. All the funds being contributed is being disbursed on the ground to meet our day-to-day -day challenges. You must understand that, please. Every ESN operative in every state is under the state commander. I don't care who you are. Even some lone rangers, some special squads that we have, you are under the overall command of the state commander. Every ESN operative in every state is under the state commander who is under the overall general who in turn reports to the high command. Very, very important because the only thing we have to defeat our enemies is discipline. Any army that is disciplined always ends up winning. Very, very important. We understand this today. Discipline is key. And we don't want people who are abroad meddling in what we are doing. It is not good, please. Without, dis with, without discipline, we cannot defeat this monster. Remember that they have their agents in your governors and all the rest of them. You must understand that our governors are evil. And like those that sold our forefathers to the white man, they will do anything now to sell us to the full and the ginger weed. They have no conscience. They have no soul. That was why they invited Operation Python Dance 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, if it's before, they'll bring Python Dance. And as I told you, people should not panic. They said they want to bring their army. They have no army to bring. The zoo, they have no army to bring. Forget all that rubbish. We bring our army. You have nothing to bring. And if you try to, to move the few people you have in Bauchi and in Kaduna and Makrodi down to the east, full army, the hardened bandits will overrun your villages. And you know that very well. So all that nonsense will bring this rubbish. They have nothing. One day, they will answer for their crimes. Please, without discipline, we cannot defeat these people. And to all those encouraging these evil and corrupt governors, know that you are aiding and abating the terrorists to take over our land. If you support these, they will be rubbish. You are aiding them because they can't do nothing. How can you form a security network with the Fulani soldiers behind you and Fulani police? Are you foolish? The same people that if you ask them to go and arrest one or one full and a bandit, somebody will say no to you. So people are saying that we should come together. ESN and the Bubago. I have not seen a Bubago before. How can I come together with something I have not seen? Come together with who? Oh, you mean come together with the commissioner of police who is a, a, a Liu Alekali from uh, Fulani? So they will know all our... Okay, now I understand. So they will know... 
I'm a modus operandi, they know all our secrets, how we operate, and then they will go and tell their chief of army staff, they now launch a counterattack against us. That is what they want. So people telling you about uh, rubbish and all the rest of them, they want to set a trap for us. They say, come, let's join together and provide this security. We go to the meeting. They ask us, how many men do you have? How many arms do you have? And all the rest of it, they're going to tell you. Because, they, uh, of course, you call it joint security, which means the full and the police commissioner will be there, isn't it? Now, do you see why we cannot be part of that rubbish? Can you now understand the reason why? If they're interested, they should support what ESN is doing. Come and support it. And we are doing a very good job already, aren't we? We are doing a very marvelous, marvelous, fantastic job already. If you want to know what your future will be like without ESN, go and study the history of Hausa people. I keep telling you this all the time. If you want to know what your village will be like in the next 50, 60, 70 years, go and ask yourself, what is the original name of Sokoto? They will tell it is Gober. Hausa, today, it is the Sultanate owned by the Fulani. The same thing is about to happen to us unless we open our eyes and ears now, not tomorrow, to fight and defeat this very monster. And once again, allow me to commend those who are doing their fundraising in Maryland and those that did one earlier in China. Every help you're bringing to us is going to the front line. But you know, I must make one thing very clear. We don't want to breed the type of, um, should I say, culture and, um, and thinking or philosophy of militancy, which is uh, money for hand, back for grant type of thing. Before they go and do and sack foreign terrorists from their forest, you, you give them money. We don't do that. We're a volunteer army. We have come to defend our land. Do not bring corruption into it by talking to people selectively and saying, I'm promising them something. I will not tolerate it. Anybody who does that next time will be removed from my POB. I don't want anybody speaking to men on the ground. They have commanders. With only discipline, we are going to win and succeed in this very war that we're fighting. Understand that very clearly. I thank you all for listening to us this very evening and as always, some may think that we despise them. Of course we don't. Everything I say to you is born out of love so that you can repent and change, reason very well, and be worthy to be called a human being. With all the love in my heart, believe it or not, I do. From me, from here, it is good evening.